Greetings to you all, my name is Andy and welcome back to Tales of Vesperia. In our previous episode we finally got to Reloise Hollow. And in this episode we're going to be going into this cave in search of an Intilakea. So, here we go. Oh, this place looks nice. It actually does. <laughs> like this was at the bottom of the mountain. Watch it! That's air, not water. It's really dense. You shouldn't go near it. You came. Hey, that's... You're Chroma, right? It doesn't look like you're trying to avenge Alexei. Duke didn't listen to you, did he? He's trying to protect the world in his own way. So what is Duke trying to do? He's trying to exchange the lives of humans to protect the world. What? Why would Duke do something like that? He doesn't trust humans. But Duke helped us! He even lent us his precious sword! I assume he saw some of himself in you. Or perhaps he thought he wouldn't have to get his hands dirty as long as you were around. What are you...? Why are you telling us about Duke? I think it's time you showed who you really are, Antilochea. Huh? What do you want? Is this just a roundabout way of saying you're not going to help? I too cannot trust humans, but neither do I want to see him take revenge on his own kind. If you can truly save the world, then I will not refuse to help. However, you have chosen a different path. You will likely confront each other. Yeah, maybe. If he is beyond your power, then nothing in this world can stop him. I will test your strength. Here she comes. All right, here's the Chroma Dragon. Chroma, in her Entelikea form. She's level 59, 393,300 hit points. Resistant to fire, wind and light, weak to earth and dark. Right, so we're going to have a quick tweak of Rita's arts here. <laughs> dark and earth, that's what we need to stick. Damn, even our newly learned Crimson Flare won't do us any good. As for Estelle, if you would kindly cast sharpness on me. Ow! If you cannot defeat Estelle, me, stay back. then there's no point in facing Duke. Guess that's what we get for taking on an Antilochea. Come on, guys. Stay sharp. I'm not finished with you yet. We'll keep playing with you till you die. This is my wager. Will you win or will I? Nothing more than that. Come! We might look weak, but fate is on our side.
Damn, my hearts are sealed. <laughs> oh god, so are Rita's. Yeah, she's a... Yes! I'll explain how we do that afterwards. Uh oh, cheese it, guys! Raven, get back! Get on you! Oh no, 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 no! Hey, I'm over here. Chroma! No, Estelle, you've got to stop using Holy Rain. It's healing her. Secret Mission 20 versus Chroma. 
downed her by timing your strikes between certain of her attacks. From what I know in finishing this objective, when Chroma jumps up into the air to do some kind of ground pound, that's when you attack her from underneath. It doesn't trigger right away, you need to do it a couple of times. My goodness, that battle was a bit of a <laughs> mind feckery, wasn't it? We've got a rainbow lens and a hunter's monocle. I can do even better than this! Nice. Hey, I'm getting pretty good! I'm even stronger now! About time! That's the logical outcome! Marvelous. Perhaps you all can, indeed, save the world. Estelle, come on. Judith? Right. Do it. Head back for now. Right. We don't have time to just hang around here. Oh, not that path again. These old bones of mine are tired. Estelle, that art you just did. Yes, I know. I surprised myself, too. I just kind of stuck attack magic and support magic together, and that came out. No, no, no. That was way more powerful than just kind of sticking them together. R really? That just shows how strong Estelle's grown. <gasps> well, you're definitely a lot stronger than when I first met you. Keep up the good work, Estelle. Of course. You two do the same. So we totally do have time, let's have a look around here, see what else we can find. Forty thousand gold, nice. Maybe that was Duke's private stash and we've just raided it. But there is something almost primal and ancient about this place. You can almost think this was the primordial ooze from which all life came. In fact, in the Tales of Vesperia universe, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> what are all these plants though? That's what I wonder. That tune. Thank you. 
That tune didn't sound exactly like the one that we saw near those odd structures before, but it was almost the same. Almost like a remix of it. It's kind of strange, you don't normally hear the term remix applied to such fast-paced songs. <laughs> oh, darn it. I'm gonna go a little crazy here. Please do. That was so easy. Alright, let's see what we can give Estelle now that she's finally learned her special. Rod plus one, make way for... Maybe Star Rod? No, 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 I'm thinking Dark Avenger. Haha. <laughs> So I made a promise, didn't I, that every character would get to you would get to see all of their mystic arts at least once. I think only Carol is left now. Now which way is the correct way back? Is it you? Fight like I'm gonna die, huh? You guys again? There's no way we're going to lose. Alright, what's Judith learned? Okay, she's learned everything of Longinus. So, let's give her Forte Staff. Yes, let's give her Forte Staff. It does look a bit like an ancient artifact. A staff once owned by a renowned sorcerer. It can also be used for striking. <laughs> Staffs, good for bashing. Yeah, try that in an ad slogan. Blah. I guess I can fight. Let's keep going already! Hey, this is the right way. <sighs> Finally, halfway up. If the air were a little more stable, I could get Baul down here. My consciousness. This is what it means to become a spirit. Guess she's awake. Um... So, would you still prefer to be called Chroma? No, I am no longer the Antilochea known as Chroma. You should give me a new name. Well... How about Sylph? It means the Binder of Winds. Sylph. Very well. That shall be my name. Okay, Sylph. Nice to meet you. Again. A pleasure to meet you, too. Sylph. 
Would you tell us why Duke hates humans? Very well. You know about the Great War, right? There were Intellikea who chose to live with humans, and those who chose to oppose them. The Great War was between humans who broke an ancient prohibition and the Intellikea who opposed them. And the war ended when the hero Duke won victory for the humans. Duke's a hero? Really? That's one of the truths the Empire's hiding. Humans alone could not have won that war. Elucifer, the leader of the Entelikea advocating living with humans, fought alongside them and granted them victory. Are you serious? Even I never heard that. But what does this have to do with Duke not trusting humans? Elucifer was Duke's friend. Duke fought with Elucifer against the leader of the ones who opposed humans and defeated him. However, once the war ended, the Empire feared Elucifer's power. They assaulted the injured Elucifer and took his life. He had promised Duke that he would merely watch, but it didn't matter. No. Now I get it. Anyone would stop trusting humans after that. I had no idea that was going on during the war. But it doesn't matter how badly he was betrayed. He has no right to sacrifice every human life. If you do not destroy the Artifagos before Duke, in the end, humanity will be destroyed. Hurry. I have calmed the winds. I believe Ba'u can reach you now. Thank you, Sylph. So the spirits are working out all right, but... Duke isn't. Yeah. We managed to get the four elemental spirits! Yeah. Now. We have to convert the world's Blastia cores to spirits. Right. If we could control the Autophagos with just those four, then we wouldn't need the others. That thing is not exactly something you want to take on lightly. We better make damn sure we're set. There's no second chance. I know, I know! Just by creating the spirits, we've already changed Terka Lumarais. Even if it is to save the world. We've been making these decisions all on our own. Now we're changing the lives of everyone in the world. That can't be just our decision. Yeah, you're right. If we can't get them to understand what we're trying to do, we're just as bad as Alexei. But we don't have time. But we can still talk to the Imperial Knights and the Guilds, right? But if they don't approve of how we're doing things, we will become the great evil. I can't stand by and watch the world be destroyed. Even if Duke manages to save the world his way, it doesn't mean anything if there's no one left to live in it. So I don't care if people call me evil. I will give up the Blastia to defeat the Autophagos. What are you going to do? If you want to get off, now's the time. I'm going. My life belongs to brave Vesperia anyway. Me too. Pharaoh and Bellius left it to us. And I don't like leaving things half finished. I know what it feels like to regret what you didn't do. If I stop now, I'll really regret it. Yeah, me too. I don't want to feel like that. No matter what path I choose, I can take whatever happens. I've learned that on this journey. 
and the people of the world will understand. They're strong enough to take a changing world. Yeah. We do this today so we can laugh tomorrow. That's what I believe. <laughs> All right, everyone. Together until the end. So let's get ready and then go talk to His Majesty Yoder and the people in the Union. So what exactly do you need to get ready? Leave it to me. I want to stop by a city somewhere. I need to pick up some stuff. How about Port Nor? It's at the edge of Elikia. I want to find out what's happened at Emmett Hill since the road was blocked, too. Let's go. Alright, more stuff is happening. So yes, we're gonna head to Port Nor, and there's a synthesis point. It finally started appearing. Or did I only just now notice them? Oh, flippity flip! Let's eliminate them! I'll blow you away! That was so easy. Wikia ore, filifolia fruit, gel base. <laughs> Fungus powder MX. Score. I think. Anyway, there are a couple more points dotted about. But we'll get to them as we go. Is Byrule doing alright? You sure he's not getting too tired? No, he's fine. But he's uneasy. What's wrong? The apatheia within him isn't enough to undergo spirit conversion yet. But he knows that someday, he will need to give up his current form and become a spirit. Well, humans are all going to die sometime, but we don't spend every day worrying about it. I imagine some people do. Are you saying Baal is that weak? He's far more delicate than you, Yuri. Dying, in his case, isn't exactly death like we normally think of it, though, right? But it does mean that his consciousness will disappear and be replaced by something new. So it's basically a fear of the unknown. That part of it is actually not too different from us. The other Intelikea have accepted that they must become spirits. They feel it is their duty to maintain the stability of this planet. Baul's got a mission of his own though, doesn't he? I mean, what about his commitment to destroy all of the Hermes Blastia? The determination necessary for destroying Blastia and becoming a spirit are very different. Aul still lacks the resolve to give up his identity as an Intelikea. I think lacking it is a lot healthier if you ask me, and I certainly understand. He seems pleased that you understand him. Still, I worry about him going on like this. Do you want him to become a spirit, Judy? No, not in the least. But I wonder what the Intelikea, what the spirits themselves must think. What's going on? I'm not sure. Baul and the spirits are communicating. 
or something like that, but without using their voices. Yes. What happened? He says we shouldn't worry about him. But what was all that? Hmm. The spirit said something to calm him down. Maybe they told him how easy they've got it. Yeah, probably. At any rate, it's impossible for him to become a spirit now. We're going to have to go on depending on you until the journey's over, Baul. He wants you to know you can count on him. Oh, since when were you so deep a character? <laughs> ah, he's alright. Anyway, I'm gonna check out something first. If it's if it leads to nothing, you'll see a cut here. Ciao! Does this stone look really worn down to anyone else? It looks like it's been pretty worn down by wind. Huh? That's the sword we got from the Elder Miorzo. A spear came from inside the rock? It's shape. It looks like this is a fell arm too. Yes, I think so. It seems like there's some sort of strange power linking these two weapons together. Hey, I think we can get inside from here. And we obtained Zarek. This is what I was finally hoping to show you guys. <laughs> well, this is part of it. Zarek. A demonic spear named after the Witch of Drought. A single swing can turn an ocean into a desert. This right here is Judith's fell arm. Not quite as strong as what we've got equipped just now, but give it time, it can get there. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look inside. <laughs> Does this seem familiar? It should. <laughs> this is just like where we were fighting Corona. As you can see there, up the top right, the location's been updated. <laughs> These strange rock structures that are dotted about Terkalumeres are actually... Aircrony. Seeing as these Aircrony's would be, for all other intents and purposes, hiding in plain sight, it's understandable that they would be hidden. Anyway, check this out. This is... It looks like an Aircrony. Wow, who'd have thought a natural air cranny would be left here? With that giant rock sealing it up, it makes sense that nobody would get into here until now. What's up, Yuri? You shouldn't get too close. Wait, let me see that. Aha, just as I thought. It's just like the ones we saw before. The internal geometry is changing. What do you think will happen if you use it? Why don't you give it a try? How's this? Whoa, the orb's color is different from last time. What is it? The difference in color is due to an increase in fire attributes. Fire? I wonder if we could burn anything you wanted. I think that's probably not the case. It seems beyond the Sorcerer's Ring's capabilities. What was it? The two types of air are reacting to each other, or something? On a basic level, that's pretty much right. I see. So the ring can burn a tree or a vine since they've got air running through them. Not all material has air flowing through it, so there are a lot of things the Sorcerer's Ring won't be able to ignite. 
So depending on what's hit by the blast, some things will break and other things will burn? I think most objects wouldn't even react at all. Yes, that's right. Normally the air mixes with surrounding atmosphere and nothing happens at all. But if you take a mass of air and collide it with the material that's, that already contains air, the violence of the sudden confluence of air can destroy or ignite the original object that was struck. Mm, that makes sense. That's all a bit too complicated for me to wrap my head around. But at least it's clear that we can put this ring to good use. So you mean, we could use this to burn up walls or trees that are blocking us from getting somewhere we need to go? Yeah, we could go places we couldn't before. Let's go around and see. And there it is, Sorcerer's Ring level 4. Let's see what this skit has to say. Undine, Efreet, Gnome, Sylph, the spirits of the four great elements have been born. The Entelikea were thinking of the planet after all. I was worried there for a little bit, but that wasn't too bad. You call surviving by the skin of our teeth not too bad? Ha! Ow! A anyway, we can defeat the Autobagos for sure now, right? Not yet. There's still too many unknown variables. Hypothesize, test, evaluate, then prove. We have to follow the proper steps to ensure success. I'm not even sure how effective the four elements will be in converting air to mana yet. Wait, could the mana from the loss of materialized air created by the spirits be maintaining the balance? If so, then I shouldn't be measuring the actual value, but... No, that's not right. I mean... Okay, she's gone. Yup, I'd say there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, Rita's got this covered. We could just muck around until the end of the game. But look at how lovely this place is. <laughs> so yeah, one could almost think that Entelikea just hid this air cranny. <laughs> They sealed it up because they didn't want people like us getting into it. Anyway, with our new and improved Sorcerer's Ring, there are indeed new places that we can go exploring. One such place... Let's go back to the Alikia continent. <laughs> I'm feeling brave today. Why do you ask? Well, <laughs> now that we have the upgraded Sorcerer's Ring, at last, we can find a Giganto Monster. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about the Giganto Monsters. I actually am. But what we could do is check in on one of the other air crannies. See what we find there. Even though there's four of these dotted about, they'll all be listed as question mark until we go exploring, so let's head in. Again, I'm just completely blown away by the scenery here. <laughs> that was very... <laughs> that wasn't very dramatic at all. They all look a little bit different on the inside. This is where I would think this is a tease. If you were playing any other video game, would you not be incredibly suspicious of not being able to cross something here and there being just a black bit in the distance? Ah, oh, that always bugged me. I don't know. The PlayStation 3 version of this game has a lot of content that the Xbox One doesn't, so I'm thinking maybe they expand on that there. Or maybe they were leaving it for DLC, who knows. Does anything happen if I go over here? Nope. Oh wow. <laughs> Giant air cranny crystal down there. Unfortunately, there isn't much in the way of treasures in these places. They're basically for show. And as strange as it is that you would add something like this in a video game which doesn't really serve much of a purpose, it does make the place seem a little bit more realistic. In real life, there are plenty of useless places. <laughs> yeah, 
Anyway, next place we want to go to is the Cloy Woods. The first thing I'm going to do is heal up. And I'm going to save it for safe measure. <laughs> Oh, to be back here again, huh? Doesn't this take you back, guys? All the way back in the second and or third episodes, we were wandering about here, and way off in the distance there was a big, colossal creature that we could never, ever actually get to. Well, I think it's about time we paid it a visit. There it is over there, just teasing us. <laughs> I liked the fact that it was there though, it was a nice touch. In fact, yeah, I'll save it here. <laughs> I fear for my own mortality now. So yes, with the upgraded sorcerer's ring, we can indeed burn special plants and trees. It's a bit of a cop-out, but I like that they gave a little bit of an explanation as to why certain things wouldn't burn. Anyway, this looks burnable. FIRE! Yeah! <laughs> anyway, look at this place though! Hiding away in the coy woods, huh? Are the enemies here any different? And look at. Oh! <laughs> it's an ambush! This is awesome! The sign of victory! Yeah. Alright! Yeah, it would be good practice to clear out a lot of the smaller bad guys, and I remember you guys being freakishly fast. Sorry, but you're going bye bye. Not done yet. All right, you picked the wrong people to fight with. All right, moving swiftly on. Last guys. Yep, same as before. Alright, who's next? Hey, come on! Yay! Alright! How about a hug? I don't think so. Okay, we will go exploring this place a little bit, but first of all, you there. Don't you turn your backside to me. I'm over here. Hi. Hello. What do you have? Alright, first things first, Rita, let's turn all your arts back on. In fact, let's put Carol in this fight. Behold the Chimera Butterfly, level 50, 166,800 hit points, resistant to earth and wind, weak to fire. In terms of the Giganto monsters, this one isn't too bad. Especially since we finished fighting off Chroma, who was stronger, we should be okay. Yeah. 
This looks like it could be problematic. Come on you Mothra wannabe, we're gonna take you down. Then I'm gonna make a very nice throw with your wings. That went well. <laughs> Dragon powder. I'm even stronger now. Finish that one. It should be worth saying that all of the characters get different titles for what level they reach. So at level 60, they'll all get new ones. Carol's growing up. Carol, that was so awesome. I've, I've gotten really strong. <laughs> Brave Asperia is set if you keep doing things like that. No, I can't just stop there. I have to keep working, get even stronger. Looks like he's grown along with his arts. Good job, Carol. Look at how lovely this place is. It's a real shame that they've basically kept it aside for the Giganto monster. Anyway, curious thing about these trees. You can shoot them. Obtained apple. Obtained apple. Yeah, you can just shoot them and they drop things. Obtained strawberry. Peach. And peach. Really? All from the same tree? I'll take it. What have we got here? Glacia Lebolus. Would you believe me if I told you? This is actually Carol's fell arm. <laughs> Glacia Lebolus. A demonic axe haunted with anger and sorrow. The reason of the curse can only be revealed through battle. So Carol's done not bad in terms of defeating enemies, although he was one of the first characters we got. So yeah, Glacia Lebolus. That's Carol's fell arm. <laughs> we'll find the others soon enough. Or most of them soon enough. And we got the Overdrive Kid. <laughs> this basically puts Carol on Rapide's tail. <laughs> there he is. Overdrive Kid. Here we go! Yeah! Brave Vesperia! <laughs> Well, I like it. Anyway, what have we got in this one? Kiwi fruit. Apple. Man, I would love a tree that grows both kiwi fruit and apples. Oh, hello, treasure chests. And we also get a rebirth ring. <laughs> we will not go easy on you. Rebirth Ring. If you're lucky, this might resurrect you from KO during battle. One can still hope for a miracle. If you've gotten to this... Oh, seriously? This looks easy. Don't let him trip you up. Just like that next time, guy. A little bit of an Estelle fail there, but... <laughs> If you're getting to this point, you know, being able to safely defeat the Giganto monsters, then you probably don't need a rebirth ring. <laughs> anyway, here we are on the far side of Koi Woods. I'm just gonna walk it and we're gonna go over and check on the traveling in. After all, if we've got one more Giganto monster under our belt, then they're gonna want to hear about it. Here we go.
Hmm, you mean to tell me you defeated a Chimera Butterfly? I must thank you. Please, take this. We got a Chimera skill. Have heard that seven of the Giganto monsters have been slain. As far as we know, two still left. On the continent of Hypionia, the Bulsus lives within the sacred land of the Critia. On the continent of Eurosia, <laughs> Eurosoria, the griffin can be found in a certain field. That is all. No more cutscene? That's a shame. Anyway, let's check out one more thing before we continue. There's an island which does not appear on the map at the moment, which makes me think that it's going to be completely unavailable to us. <laughs> or rather, we can access the island, but the structure on the island will still be a bit beyond us. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was worried for a second that the island itself will not appear. And sure enough, the central structure is still hidden beneath There's something. I really don't think it's underwater, but it's... it's there. <laughs> anyway, we flew over another air printer to get here, and my goodness, it's foggy. So, let's see what else we can find. Here we are, third of four. Oh, that's nice. Oh wow, look at that star pattern up there. That's kind of strange. <laughs> it's not a star pattern at all, it's the moon behind clouds. Doi. Anyway, good job! So as you can see, these places are more or less the same on the inside. They only vary slightly. Anyway, it's a bit of a tease because there's nothing that can that really suggests that something will happen if we go over here, but... And I'd be right. <laughs> okay, we'll check out the final air crane and then we'll call it a day. I'm currently on holiday between finishing one job and starting a new one, so I've taken the opportunity to record plenty of these episodes ahead of time. And I'm definitely feeling it on my throat again. <laughs> anyway, was the last air crane on the Uzoria continent? I think it was. And yep, we're on the right path. And it's funny, this one actually has a path leading to it. Guess this one's popular. Again, look at this landscape, isn't it great? Okay, it does look a bit like Cave Mock, but with the camera tilted upwards a bit, but it still looks nice. Shazam! Alright, let's have a gander inside. See again, there's nothing to really suggest that anything will happen when we go in here, but your natural RPG instincts tell you to actually give it a shot. Really? Nothing's gonna happen? I'll check over the other side too. Nothing here? Anything at all, guys. Seriously, I'll take a skit. <laughs> I 
Yeah, that's strange. Nothing at all. Oh well. See, what's actually meant to happen is, you can go to another one of these air crinnies and it will upgrade your sorcerer's ring again, so that it's got a much longer range. Now, I've never remembered which one of the air crinnies this actually applies to, or when it actually happens, but it definitely happens with one of the air crinnies that we've not been to yet. So, I may go and research this off screen and show you guys in the next episodes. But in the meantime, I'm going to call an end to things here. We've defeated an Entelikea and a Giganto monster, and we've gotten all four of the elemental spirits. There hasn't been too much in the way of battling in this one, apart from those two boss fights, and I apologise for that. But rest assured, things are on the up and up. That big tentacle thing in the sky, your days are numbered. <laughs> so, as always, thanks for watching, my name is Andy. If you've enjoyed my videos, then please do like, favourite, subscribe and all that stuff. Any and all feedback is welcome, and I will see you guys next time. See you later!